I now appear before you in the persona of Sir Walter Scott. I write grammar as I speak to make my meaning known, and a solecism in a point of composition is indifferent to me. One man has one way of expressing himself and another another, and that is all the difference between them. I have not Goldsmith's art, so as to tramp from cottage to cottage over the world, I greatly doubt, sir, that I were born for nay better than a gangrel scrape gut. In spite of the dangerous habits of our youths, my character has not been permanently vitiated by my intercourse with them. I begin to get too old and stupid, I think. I do not dislike the path that lies before me. I have seen all that society can show and enjoyed all that wealth can, sh can give me, and I am satisfied much as vanity, if not vexation of spirit. I think now the shock of the discovery is past and over. I am much better off on the whole. I am as if I had shaken off from my shoulders a great, great mass of garment, rich indeed, but cumbersome, and always more a burden than a comfort. What a life mine has been, half educated, almost wholly neglected or left to myself, stuffing my head with most nonsensical trash and undervalued in society for a time by most of my companions, getting forward and held a bold and clever fellow contrary to the opinion of all who thought me a mere dreamer, Broken hearted for two years, my heart handsomely pieced again, but the crack will remain till my dying day. Rich and poor, four or five times, once on the verge of ruin, yet opened new sources of wealth almost overflowing. Now, taken in my pitch of pride and nearly winged, grief makes me a housekeeper, and to labor is my only resource. Never did a being hate task work as I have hated it from my infancy up. It is not that I am idle in my nature either, but propose me to do one thing and it is inconceivable the desire I have to do something else. Not that it is more easy or more pleasant, but just because it is escaping from an imposed task. I have walked the last on the domains I have planted, sate the last time in the halls I have built. I find my eyes moistening, and that will not do. I will not yield without a fight for it. In prosperous times, I have seen, sometimes felt my fancy and powers of language flag. But adversity is to me at least a tonic and a bracer. The fountain is awakened from its inmost resources as if the spirit of affliction had troubled in my passage. What a tale of the alphabet I should draw after me. Edited excerpts from the diary and biography of Walter Scott by Random X Rhodes.